Hi guys and welcome to my channel. It's Hila here, Saturday Night Stitch, and today I've got a real treat for you. I've got the Knit Mode June 2020 Browse Through. Now I actually got this um, in June, but there were so many fabulous patterns in it, I just couldn't decide what to make from it, so I kind of put it in the back burner and sort of forgot about it because I was getting so many other patterns, but now... I'm making this dress here on the cover. So I was like, let me share my thoughts um, on this magazine with you guys. So right off the bat, the curb appeal of this cover was so me. Pink and yellow are my favorite colors. And I had this on my bedside table for the longest time just because I enjoyed looking at it and i just want you to make a note of this where it says 21 patterns this always kind of triggers me on sewing magazines because when they announce that they've got 21 patterns in there it makes me want to count and check so we're going to check at the end to see if it was actually 21 patterns okay so right what have we got here Okay, we have some really lovely, lovely dresses um, here. And what they're doing is they're doing this thing where they have decided to allocate shapes. So we've got apple, I think this is carrot, pillar, pear, hourglass. But what you will notice is obviously it's the same model that they're using. So whether it means that the same model is these different female body archetypes or they're trying to say that if you wear this dress, then it suits you if you're in apple shape. I just got a little bit confused about that simply because they were using the same model and talking about the different body types. And this keeps on coming up throughout the issue itself. But lovely array of summery colors. Very, very inspiring. Okay, so first dress is this interesting sheath style dress made in a jersey and we've got a diamond center panel down a center front seam and then we've got these diamond panels along the side seams as well and that creates for a very flattering cinched in look at the waist and I love it. I love the fabric that they have used for it. This is definitely a light weight. I would say this is an E-T-I-T-Y jersey so you know that really slinky one because you can kind of tell from the drape of it and because you don't have a lot of bulk along those uh, corner seams which you can easily get bulky if you tried to make this in say something like a scuba so beautiful interpretation beautiful fabric and excellent stitching and I think that this is going to be a popular one this this is my dress this dress here, this is me. It's yellow, it's voluminous, it's a maxi skirt, it shows off the shoulders. So three things that it ticks off that are typical me. And I want to make this. The only thing is I don't have a yellow cotton lawn or a yellow cotton poplin fabric. So I'm kind of stuck making it with a viscous fabric. But I still think that it is going to look fabulous. So it's got raglan sleeves and it's got an elastication, uh, elasticated shoulder band there. Beautiful absolutely love it and according to their classification this is kind of like a what's this an upside down cone or a carrot shape i don't know you know i'm definitely not a carrot shape i don't think so but beautiful okay and then we've got a lovely dress here with a cowl neck i definitely need to try and make something with a cowl neck because i think that they're so beautiful and elegant and the shoulder it's got a shoulder yoke detail that creates almost an epaulette I was with them all the way until I realized that they had a shoulder pad. So it's got shoulder padding, which is kind of giving her this slight American footballer look. And that put me off of it. Personally, I'm somebody who's got very broad shoulders, so I don't need more padding anyway. Oh, I made a little note here. Um like the obi belt look. Oh, yeah, so I like the obi belt. Uh, look on there but I'm not I don't like the shoulder pads if I were to make this I definitely would skip those shoulder pads I guess because they're saying that this is for a pear shape and the typical pear shape tends to have sloped shoulders they're kind of saying that this might work for this but if I had to be perfectly honest it doesn't look that great on her because I don't think that she's got the sloping um, slim narrow shoulders that are very typical of pear shapes so it does it looks like she's got her shoulders hunched 
I'm not a big fan of that. Love this top. It's got an empire line. It's got a center front button placket. It's very sweet. It's very feminine, especially with those flutter sleeves. And I think it is a lovely style, despite the fact that I think the fabric kind of lets it down on here, though they have used some red buttons. But I think that this is a lovely style. And if you wanted it to look more minimalist, you just obviously get rid of the flounce sleeves, but beautiful v-neck, perfect for summer. This would work so well with cotton poplins. Oh, and this one. I love this dress. I just love all of the details we have. It's a wrap dress um, for starters. And we've got kind of like an asymmetrical um, hem going on here with the flounces. And you can easily get rid of the flounces if you just want it to be more minimalist. And if you look at the back, you've got this open detail at the back, which is just wonderful and perfect for summer. So there's a lot going on with this. I love the candy stripe fabric that they used for it. And they've played around with having the stripes going diagonal on the wrap bodies. And they've got them horizontal on the waistband. And then they've got them diagonal again on the skirt itself. And then with the flounce, beautiful execution. And I think that nip mode did a fantastic job with this one okay and so then this we come back to this whole shape thingy where they say what shape are you and on some of these things some of the shapes they describe them as uh, slim legs or slim waist or broad shoulder and stuff like that and when i was checking i ticked at least one thing in every single um shape that they have and there were three of them that had I think I was ticking three out of four. So personally, I don't go with the whole dress according to your shape type thing because they are using the same model, you know, and she's wearing dresses that are supposed to be on um, different shapes. I, I just, um, I think it's, it can be a little bit reductive to try and reduce women to just one, two, three, four, five, uh, five archetypical uh, shapes and I think it can take the joy out of sewing if you have to be thinking oh this style is only suited for pear shapes when really when you're sewing I think it's the fabric I think that as long as you love the fabric and you love the work that you put into it and the effort that you put into it you can love whatever outfit regardless of whether it's meant to be for hourglass or whatever figure and shape but that's just my own personal rant aside okay uh, mini me pattern is a jumpsuit with a little bit of a cold shoulder detail here very very cute um and you can see uh, further detail of the jersey i think it's been made in a jersey yes this is a jersey jumpsuit with a drawstring waist and a drawstring neckline and a drawstring sleeve too many drawstrings going on here for me it's like gun, 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 gun. four is one too many okay and then over here we've got a dress a simple a-line trapeze style dress with some deep french dust and a center darts and a center front seam i can see this being a popular silhouette it reminds me of kind of like the Mer merchant and mills uh, silhouette which is quite popular and then it's got this really cute little freely neckline here and i think this would work if you're using a nice and soft fabric that would work for it and over here we've got a pencil skirt pencil skirts are always popular um, i think you always find a pencil skirt in any sewing magazine that you see the difference with this one is we have got a zipper down the center back i don't know whose idea it was to have an exposed zipper down the center back because this thing is going to be uncomfortable to sit on i would not like to sit on something that's an exposed zipper all the way down the back um, personally so I don't know whether it's ornamental or whether it's lined. Um, yeah, I don't think that this is the best execution of an exposed zipper. And we've got that dress again. And this time it's in this uh, beautiful lilac scuba print, which I've seen at Fabwicks, actually. I've seen this fabric in person. It's a beautiful fabric. And it's a scuba. And again, those shoulder pads, uh, they are not working for me. Um, but that might just be my own personal thing. When I look at the line drawing, I think that the line drawing is beautiful without the shoulder pads. Um, I would try to make this without um, the pads. And then we've got that dress, my dress, again. And this time it's also in purple. I love purple. Oh, 
and I like the belt with the D-ring detail and when I'm making it I'm going to be making it with the D-ring uh, detail uh, as well so overall quite happy and here we have the dress again um, with the empire line detail now I'm just going to nitpick on this one for a little bit because you've got the empire line uh, detail here and you've got the bust duck so you're supposed to have some minimal shaping along the bust but if you see here on the extended size range this empire line it doesn't look to me like it's been drafted for the larger cup size because it's hitting across the bust whereas on here if you look over here it's hitting underneath the bust so this is where when you do a full bust adjustment on patterns like this it's so that you're still able to maintain these proportions where your waistline if it's intended to go underneath the bust and not to go over the fullest part of the bust that's why you would do those adjustments so that you can accommodate for a bigger cup size but still maintain those design lines so when i'm seeing this and it's either this waistline is meant to go over the fullest part of the bust or it's supposed to be going underneath in which case something's gone a little bit wrong with the drafting here or they've put an incorrect sized dress on an incorrect model but that's just me nitpicking at the design lines here we'd have to see what the nip mode sewing community does with it but that just was a bit of a dissonance for me when i saw the pictures but we'll have to keep an eye on it okay and so this was me counting out the actual number of patterns you know sort of showing which ones were the repeats and which ones were not um repeats so for instance pattern number eight is the dress and then you've got pattern number nine which is a body top but is basically made of the bodies of the dress and then just sort of like an under panty thing so i counted this as one pattern and then dress number 10 is the sheath dress and then pattern number 12 is the top whereby you're just cutting it off at the waist so these count as one pattern but anyway when i did the total count eliminating any repetitions or anything like that it came up to a total of 10 sewing patterns and not 21 and i think it's so unnecessary you just don't need to write this number on there there's a lot of patterns that come with the sewing pattern magazine anyway there's no need to inflate expectations and you know uh, then not meet them so this is for the women's patterns i forgot to count in the men's patterns okay so there we go with the instructions and we're just going to skip quickly along and these pattern sheets they do require the use of erasable highlighters okay and then yanis has got a lovely smorgasbord of different styles that you can mix and match here today and i think that this is very ambitious and i think it's wonderful because you're trying to get people to do more pattern hacking and that's always an admirable thing to do so you've got the different types of bodices and necklines that you can have and the different sleeves and the different skirt options and how to put them together fantastic stuff so here you've got a plus d plus i plus m and i think that this is really good because you're trying to give the power to the seamstress to act really do the pattern hacking and i know pattern hacking can be a bit scary especially if you're new to sewing and i like that nip mode is trying to help people be more adventurous um, in their sewing i like this without the drop shoulder and the shearing um, at the waist this is lovely with the wrap skirt detail beautiful drape on the fabric i think that they've used a silk jersey here but that's really nice and then you've got um, that dress again, the one that has got a very trapeze feel style. I can see this one being popular, people making this in a chambray or, you know, like an indigo blue or just a denim. That's the sort of aesthetic that works really well for this dress. And I loved this one. I loved the print of this fabric. I loved the flatter sleeves. I loved the 70s vibe that I got from this dress. And I was like pinning that B plus F plus K plus O, B, F, K, O has got h-i-l-a written on it <laughs> it's a fantastic stuff and this is another one that i think would be quite popular especially as a pinafore dress to wear over t-shirts or layered over roll neck tops i might make this one myself as well 
and we've got a pair of shorts for men very complex very complicated we've got the full monty of the fly front zipper the little coin pocket riveting and yeah everything so very challenging i'm surprised they gave this two and a half dots i would definitely give this at least um at least a four dot because this is kind of like full-on uh, jeans making and then we've got a lovely shearing done on a skirt so this is the dress my dress i'm just gonna call it my dress because that's the truth of it but with a sheared waist um over here just to make the skirt and then the top has just been you know cut down and some more shearing added i like this i might make this and then we've got some summer basics which are very simple variations on the patterns that we've already seen so there was that wrap dress with the asymmetrical skirt we've cut off the skirt now and we've just made it into a wrap top and we've added a flounce a sleeve flounce and then there's some trousers slash jeggings i want to say jeggings type trousers and um They've got a weirdly located center back invisible zip seam. Whenever I make trousers and they've got a center back seam, I have found from practical experience of going to the bathroom that center back seams are very awkward on trousers. So I prefer to switch them to the side. And it's normally just very easy to just, um, you know, move it over to the side. And then we've got a top from that beautiful geometric dress that had the geometric panels across the waist but it's been made into a top with a cap sleeve and here using a floral i have to say i'm a little bit disappointed because normally knit mode would be playing around with these panels here just to show off you know the awesomeness that is these diamond panels across the waist it's almost like you've got a diamond belt across the waist and then we've got the trousers instead of them being slim leg they've been given a 90s reboot and they're sort of like a kick flare the dress with the empire waist detail has been changed to have a tie at the front a la 1950s style and we've got a little elasticated finish on the puff sleeve very very pretty and there's that skirt again with the exposed zipper at the back although i'm yet to see an actual back view of the physical skirt itself apart from the line drawing i wonder why that is okay and then here we've got that top with this time they haven't put the shoulder pads on it and i think that it looks so much better and they've used a drapier fabric so you've got that cowl neck draping beautifully um, on this so with the cowl neck i think you have to be careful about what type of fabric you choose you can easily end up having like for those of you who've ever had to look after babies that are being introduced to solid foods there are these um sort of like bibs that are made out of plastic that kind of stick out to catch the food that the child is dribbling if you use a stiff fabric your cowl neck can easily look like you've got one of those bibs <laughs> i'm speaking from experience but yeah this is beautiful i think that the fabric that they use has just the right amount of drape and then we've got a skirt here with kind of like a swishy wrap detail which i think is a shame that they didn't use a contrasting fabric to really show it up and make it pop i mean i'm curious as to how they actually make it stick down like that but it's a beautiful look overall a really nice look together and there's a ad here for nippy kids which i need to try this out actually but there we go this is what we have with nip mode june 2020 so definitely a lot of patterns that i want to make in there a lot of really beautiful ones i'm making this one hoping to get this done before the end of a summer and i would hope that with time on my hands i would definitely like to make this dress i might not do it with the flounces but i do love this dress i also quite like this one this has got potential for me but without the sleeves so that's it that's my review of nip mode june 2020 a really good solid issue with wonderful curb appeal really good classic styles and just on the cover alone one two three i would make absolutely make so yeah it gets a big thumbs up from me i'm very happy that i bought this single issue let me know which are your favorites from this issue have you sewn anything from here if you haven't already do subscribe for new sewing related videos every single week and until i see you next time guys a happy sewing